People often have a very passionate connection to overlanding. We don't just like it, we love it. It speaks to our souls and challenges us in ways that allow us to grow as people and to challenge our relationships with others and ourselves. Overlanding is just that thing for me. I embrace every trip with open arms and welcome the lessons I'll learn about myself, my vehicle and the people I travel with. This trip is something special for me though. I get to go on a once in a lifetime adventure with a very good friend of mine and his father who both recently had a close call with COVID and who have been working tirelessly to get their vehicle ready for this trip. Someone else I'll be traveling with for the first time on a trip like this is my own father. This is an opportunity to really spend some quality time with him and show him a part of my life that means so much to me. My uncle, Andy, will also be joining us and will be taking a role behind the camera to make sure every little moment is captured on this sure to be fast paced journey. All in all, we'll be a team of five people in two incredible vehicles. This adventure will certainly test us all, but at the end of the day, I think it will also create lifelong friendships as we tackle it all together. With our sights set for Namibia, there were only a few last details we needed to get sorted out. This series of Rome Overlanding is presented in partnership with Garmin and supported by Cross Country Insurance Consultants, Bushtech Aluminium Canopies, Jackery South Africa, and EasyOn. Johan, thank you so much for taking a little bit of time to sit down and chat with me. Uh, I thought it would be very interesting to kind of, you know, look at the process now going across the border in a post COVID situation. Things can seem a little bit scary. Uh, I know for me, I'm nervous about the whole situation. What's, you know, what are the rules? Have things changed? Crossing a border is normally a stressful thing already. And now adding in extra layers of complexity to it, I feel like uh, this is something that might be stopping a lot of people from going out there and traveling and exploring. And at a time that's super important to be going out and actually doing that stuff, you know? so. I thought it might be good to touch base with you. Do you mind actually like telling people a little bit about what you do? Because I think what you do is pretty damn cool. <laughs> well, thanks. Thanks, Adrian. Thank you very much for the invite. Um, so from a Tracks for Africa point of view, we basically configure travel experience into things like maps and apps and books and paper maps. So our job is to continuously try and keep abreast with what changes happen in sort of self-drive landscape, you know, is there what changes at borders, bridges, road conditions, uh, new places opening up, old places closing down. Um, and in doing that, we, we've got to keep our ear on the ground because, and then we update the maps. Um, and, and that database that we maintain, that goes into our GPS maps for the Garmin GPSs. One of the big things that I want to have a look at, uh, especially in this conversation, is now with us prepping to go, there's obviously some things we need to kind of think about once we get to these borders. And I'm pretty sure it would be great for everybody else to know as well. Like if you're, if you're a first time and you're going to be crossing over into Namibia for the first time, what are some key things you think, um, you know, with all of your travel experience that people need to kind of take into account? You're crossing any border, there's an old saying that says, you can cross a border if you have your paperwork and your money with you. <laughs> the rest is actually optional. <laughs> I mean, if you forget your toothbrush, you go and buy one. Mm. Um, but without your paperwork, um, you will not get through the border. And if it comes to Namibia, the paperwork isn't that onerous. It's mm. actually for South African uh, citizens and South African registered vehicles, Namibia is a pretty easy border to cross. So mm. um, let's start with the person. So the person will need a passport mm. with a six months valid uh, passport from the date that you're trying to enter. I think that's pretty standard mm. across the world. Um, in the COVID times that we're living now, you're going to need a COVID test as well. So Namibia at this stage will accept a, a PCR test. Um, they used to ex accept the antigen for a short while, uh, mm. but now it's a PCR and they give you seven days from the day that you did the test. So that's seven days from the swap, not seven days okay. from when you receive the results. Okay. So, but I would say, yeah, I mean, just just make sure that you plan an extra day for, for waiting for your test result. 
I mean, we, we spoke a lot about the, the person. The vehicle is mm. it's pretty much the same as what it used mm. to be. I mean, to take a vehicle across the border is a, it's a pretty standard thing, you know. Mm. Again, just take your registration document, get mm. your stickers on the back. Um, one thing that people don't realize about Namibia, which has been a regulation for quite a few years actually, is that on the national road you have to drive with your lights switched on. Yes, I've heard that. I do that anyway. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, <laughs> some of us, some yeah. of us have daylight running lights already on our vehicles. Yes. But um, yeah, I've heard of quite a few people who've got a fine as they <laughs> as they proceed. Um, luckily, the Namibian police are are super friendly people okay, as well. Okay. Cool. So, They'll, they'll give you a warning. When we get to the border post, what it, what's the situation with taking meat and, and stuff like that across for food? and? That's also something that can change because it, it depends on the outbreak of something like the foot and mouth disease in South Africa or uh, yeah, what, what, whatever other outbreak there could be. I just, in my personal travels, I just don't take fresh meat or fresh veggies into Namibia or Botswana. Okay. Um, you know, there, there are plenty of very good shops which are probably stocked from the South African side, if you think about it, um, where you can buy everything like that. I think now all that's left to do is uh, get packing and get ready for an epic adventure. That's the fun part. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Jan. Cheers. Okay. You're welcome. <laughs> so, this is now apparently where an adventure begins getting a COVID-19 test but it is something we have to do so this is a, a beginning of a very busy day of getting ourselves prepared for Namibia so we're here to get the thing in there this is my first COVID test <laughs> that is an experience <laughs> it kind of tickles we've got a little bit more preparation to do then we are packing ourselves in the vehicles and we are making our way towards Namibia. And that is so, so exciting. <laughs> this is negative. <laughs> so, <laughs> that yeah, means I can go. go. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> so you're both negative yes okay awesome that's great news i'm also negative uh, my uncle's negative and we're just waiting for my dad to get the the one-time pin but i think we're looking i think we're looking good i think we are heading to namibia tomorrow we are pretty much ready to rock and roll the only thing we're still waiting for is my dad's covid results um, but we're just gonna have to get going. It seems like there was a bit of a data capture issue and they didn't put in his cell phone number correctly and he's not receiving the one-time PIN and it's just, so we're gonna have to phone and get the results emailed to us directly. Um, but we just have to kind of hold thumbs and hit the road. We can't delay any further. So all we gotta do, close things up and get going. The road to Namibia is a long one. So we needed to take this opportunity to gather ourselves, fill our long range tanks and grab some charcoal for our first night of camping. Let's get going then. This initial run would give me time to, to get used to the new radio we installed, as well as familiarize my father with the vehicle. We would leave Gauteng behind and make our way across the Northwest province, seeing the environment constantly change as we now entered the Northern Cape. So we got some good news. My dad's COVID test results came through. He is negative. So we're just gonna get the test email through so we can either get them printed or at least show them at the border. So worth the risk. Good to know, considering we are halfway there. <laughs> but everything's green lights. After a good five and a half hours on the road, it's time to stop, make a bit of lunch. So we've just set up the awnings, it's now really starting to get into that desert heat a little bit now. We're looking into the 30s and this is just the beginning for our trip. We're looking at temperatures 35, 38 degrees. So, uh, this is... <laughs>
<laughs> a bit of a warm up for us, but we're just gonna make a quick lunch and then we can get back on the road. We're a couple hours away from our campsite. I feel like and I think we should get there at a really nice time that we can set up, make a good fire, have a good braai, and just relax a little bit before we get to the border and not just ride on that anxiety yeah. into Namibia. Heading for a town called Uppington, a town that hosts many adventurers on their journeys up to the Kalahari Transfrontier National Park and the Namibian border. The latter would be our calling, and the Kalahari Monarch campsite just outside the town would be our pit stop for the night, and give us the opportunity for everybody to test out their gear and get familiar with the vehicle setups, because these vehicles would be our homes for the next few weeks. We had some awesome gear with us this trip and we couldn't be more prepared for the adventure ahead. It's nice to be out of the vehicles a little bit, sit down and relax, crack a cold beer open and we're going to get a fire going just now and just settle in. It's been a long day on the road and there's been a lot of energy building up to this moment but seeing the road signs saying Namibia 130 kilometers away that just brings joy to my heart. So tomorrow is a very exciting day. Tomorrow we're going to go and cross the border. We're going to be recharged. We're going to be energized. So it's going to be really, really exciting. But for now, let's kick up our feet, enjoy the beautiful Kalahari around us and have a good night's rest. And I think by the end of the night, our nervousness had turned into excitement because our adventure had finally begun. Tomorrow, we set foot in Namibia. This is quite a nice campsite, but it's a little bit noisy. Having a road nearby does kind of kill your immersion a little bit, but it's a, uh, you know, signs of good things to come. I think as a pit stop, it's perfect. Uh, I wouldn't spend more than a night here though, but with the border so close, it's all we need. I think tonight we'll probably be staying at the Fish River Canyon, so I think that's gonna be pretty damn awesome. We've got a fully packed day ahead of us. Border crossing, we gotta resupply, we gotta refuel, we gotta do a bunch of things. So stay tuned and let's get going. Our long trek yesterday put us at the Kalahari Monat campsite and today's journey would have us cross the Narkop border where we would cross into Namibia through Ariam's Flay before making our way to the Fish River Canyon where we would take in the epic scenery of the largest canyon in Africa before settling in at our campsite for the evening at the Hobas camp. After getting all of our COVID tests and paperwork for the border crossing sorted and kicking off our trip with a great first night of camping, everyone was buzzing to hit the road and get going. The morning preparation had begun and the vehicles would be packed and ready to go in no time. Cool, so on our way to Namibia, I think let's get some fuel and stuff sorted. And uh, yeah, what do you think? Are we gonna fill up? Yeah, I think uh, let's, let's fill up our tanks and um, head off to the border. Lekker, I'm ready. I've got my coffee here. I'm gonna put some tunes on now and have a nice little 130K drive. <laughs> We were uncertain of the fuel up ahead in Namibia, so we decided to fill up, but in hindsight, filling up on the other side of the border would have actually saved us a couple hundred bucks on fuel, because the fuel in Namibia is quite a bit cheaper than South Africa. Crossing the border is pretty stressful, and I'm not even sure why. However, the officials on the SA side were very efficient and had us processed in a couple of minutes. 
our drive across no man's land was a solid 20 kilometers through some pretty epic terrain. And when we arrived at the Namibian border post, it already felt like we had entered another country. But this was new territory for us, so a polite and cheerful tone helped guide us through the health authorities where we would show our COVID results, the road traffic fund where we would pay our road insurance and customs. So I think that's it. I think that's all our documentation and paperwork done. We're officially in Namibia. Now it's time to find a town, resupply and make our way to our first campsite. And not too long after that, we pulled over to make a quick brunch because we had quite the mission ahead of us. We decided to do a little bit of a lunch stop here. It's about one o'clock. So good time to stop. Friendly truckers. <laughs> Have a little bit of lunch. We just made some leftovers from yesterday and parked under the awnings here. Have a little, a little something something before we head into town and get some new supplies. We gotta get some meat, get some veggies. And then we're good to go. Fish River Canyon, here we come. Most of the decent stores were closed leaving a few dodgy markets and petrol stations which had no good meat. So how's this little place? Maybe two, three k's south of the Fish River Canyon kind of turn off where we're supposed to go. Beautiful little butchery, quite awesome. We didn't get any meat in the main town in Kairosburg. Everything closed by 12 o'clock and we arrived after one. So luckily I did a little bit of research beforehand and I kind of knew about this place but it was a bit of a gamble to get here and see if they were actually open. So, luckily they are, and we are resupplied on a bunch of beautiful meat for the next few days. And we stocked up pretty well, loading the freezer with everything from vors to chops and steaks. So, needless to say, we set off as a bunch of soon to be very happy campers. This would be our first taste of Namibian gravel. So we eagerly aired down our tires in preparation for a long stretch of gravel over the next couple of days. Airing down your tires just a bit not only helps with comfort, but also gives you a bit of extra puncture resistance. With the aired down tires and my newly upgraded suspension from Terrain Tamer, we just ate up the kilometers. The further we went, the more the landscapes transformed around us. This was Namibia all right. Vista after vista kept appearing, rocks jutting from the earth in ever more creative and spectacular ways. We arrived at our Hobos campsite at the perfect time. The sun was not far from setting and we still had time to get to the canyon and watch the sunset. Now that is epic. If this was Namibia's way of welcoming us, then we were certainly up for a serious adventure ahead. Rolfi, first beer in Namibia. Cheers. Cheers. Lekker man. It's been an awesome day. This is... Mm. I haven't had a beer in four months. This is so good. <sighs> That's lekker. Oh man. And look at this place. This looks absolutely really stunning. I'm really glad we came to do this now and didn't wait just for tomorrow morning because this is really special. Absolutely. It is magnificent. Mm. Andy, it's time for you to put down your camera and grab a beer. <laughs> Let's go. Soaking in the day we had just had was a challenge. My eyes and my brain couldn't even believe what they had just experienced. But now with the border crossing over, I could truly feel myself relax. And now I was ready for anything Namibia could throw at us. We have some really exciting adventures ahead of us. So make sure to subscribe so you stay on top of all the upcoming episodes. Or you can even join Patreon for early access to the upcoming series. Anyways, thank you so much for watching and I will see you on the next adventure.